Okay, uh, kind of a end of year recap video here. Just going to give you kind of the updates because I realize a lot of my videos I haven't been showing you the completed projects in the later phases. So this was a pantry cabinet we had put in during the warmer part of the summer. Uh, I didn't actually create the cabinet, but what I had to do is I had to move these two three-way switches over to here that were located where the cabinet is, which involved running conduit down to the basement over and up and snaking it through without completely destroying everything in the area. But um, so that's kind of the one small inside project we got done during the hotter days of the summer. But let's uh, go out and I'll kind of give you the video on what I've been up to lately. Um, so the deck project is pretty much complete now. For those of you who are following that, I kind of capped those uh, supporting posts underneath with the same LP product that I used. You know, it gives you that cedar look on the outside. So um, I could probably pretty up some things here and put some more detail on, but for the most part, the major goals of the project are done. Uh, the gas fire pit project has kind of re-emerged as something I had to do because I got condensation or I got rainwater into the gas line here. Uh, so I had to actually open up the, um, the line and drain out some of the water that was plugging up the line. But I don't know if it got in through the nozzles um, or if it was condensation, but I didn't use it for basically three or four four months, maybe three months over the summer. So maybe in your comments, if anyone has any thoughts on that, um, because I'm not a gas plumbing expert, but it's, I've kept it safe and upgraded that and that works nicely now, but um, not sure how the water is getting in. So I'm gonna have a better cover uh, to prevent any rainwater from getting in. So um, let's go over here to kind of the project I've been working on here for uh, landscaping so over on the other side of the garage this area has been neglected that's kind of the low priority area here but we had some gravel brought in uh, to kind of get this area under control because this was basically just a weed infested area uh, we, we don't have a, a gutter on there so we just let that fall down which is fine and it's one less gutter to plug up with all these trees, right? So this just drains out nicely here. So, and then this was my composting uh, <clears throat> pit that I built last fall. Um, basically all of last year's leaves, t uh, you know, basically turned into nothing um, by this time this year. I've used a lot of that compost though in different planting projects in the holes and things like that. And I'm, I got smart about the way I'm rotating this. I'm not putting the new vegetation into there yet because you don't want to be mixing the stuff that's further along in the process with the new stuff. Um, you can do that at first, but as the compost kind of matures, you know, you don't want to be mixing in brand new things that could take a year to break down in with the uh, compost that's a little further along. So, uh, so this is sort of this year's kind of nitrogen pile that I'm preparing to help with the leaves that'll go in there in the fall. Uh, that's a, by the way, I, I don't do the entire leaf removal anymore. I probably take like half the leaves and I do a major cleanup myself and then I hire folks to kind of sweep it clean with the blowers and get every last leaf out of here. But so then this is the, uh, the new pine tree. I jokingly call it Penis strobus because that's what it is. It's an eastern white pine. So it's my new newly added penis strobus. Anyway, um so I had to kind of, you know, uh I removed a couple small trees that were near this pole. And I'm slowly kind of I'm keeping those involved so they cover the pole uh and I'll kind of phase them out as this thing develops. This could take years to grow though, right? So I may add some more shrubbery along here and, and just build a nicer border and slowly remove these 
weed trees here and just thin them out as I'm adding things in. So it won't be a dramatic scalping of this area. It'll be more like add a couple more shrubs, take out a couple more weed trees. I had to have the village take out, you know, about a seven inch diameter tree here. Um, they've been very cooperative about helping me with, out, with some of these trees are basically I had a couple here that were the same as this tree right here which are basically just weeds and they're not structurally very safe uh, in a school zone around here they don't really like having these trees that could basically topple over in a storm so I'll be taking those out but I had them take out a small maple here that had grown up into the wire um, so um, I'm just reseeding this area here but that's basically where that tree was so I, I got that taken out so it's kind of a multi-project going on here. Removal of the final tree here, adding of another pine tree, which will, is set up in alignment with the pole from my view at the house. So it just grows right up in the view, blocking that pole for, you know, when you're looking from the house over here. So, um, so that's kind of that project. That, I just completed that, so I'm growing that seed in there now with my misting. Um, one little thing about the sprinklers, it's funny, it's a small thing, but when you're planting seed, I highly encourage more of a misting type sprinkler because you'll wash and move the seed every time you water it, right? So you don't want the seed moving around a lot as you're trying to get it to germinate. It just gives enough of a mist where it keeps it wet, it soaks it in, but it's a finer spray so the seed doesn't constantly get moved around when you're watering so that's kind of a, a another tip I have for you with that. So, anyway, I people think I'm weird. Anyway, so that's my other tree here. That's probably now about three years old. Um, so you can see what that can become, you know. So, you know, it's a couple more years, and you know, I guess it's probably going to take like five years for that to be about, you know, twelve feet high. So, you know, that's year one, right? So. Anyway, uh, and over here we got the irrigation system that I've been slowly introducing into this area. Uh, I'll openly admit that this, these plantings here are not looking good because this is a great sort of incubator area. Like when I put plants in here, they generally succeed. So when I bring things in, like uh, I moved these two black-eyed Susans over they were over by that tree and they weren't doing well at all over there. So here I can keep an eye on them, keep them watered, make sure they survive. And then once I figure out where I want them to go, I'll move them out of here. But these um, purple cone flowers here are not growing in a very orderly way, right? So I, I don't know if I'm going to keep these here or not, but I had them in groupings. Um, these are some Shasta daisies underneath them here. They did very well in this spot. So they basically everything likes this spot you know these are some irises I brought in from the east coast so I'll probably this fall what I'll do is I'll divide these up and I'll get like groupings of the irises maybe along here so that looks more designer right I'm not a very good landscape architect admittedly so and then these are some rows of Sharon which I really enjoy that I brought in from the east coast um, so I finally have some su surviving Rosa Sharon plants here that I've always had them at every house um, and so I finally kind of have some established here but again I have to figure out where these are going to go because basically everything likes being right here but I can't have too much of a, of a variety here. And that's a, a, a hardy mum that uh, I think we brought from the east coast as well. Uh, those come back every year so that's like a something else to know is you know there's a difference. The mums, regular mums that they want you to buy, they die and the hardy mums come back every year so this is something that I'll probably split and get more organized with if possible you know sometimes you know it can be an issue of just figuring out where you want things to go I think it does take a lot of thought on that so um, and then of course all the shrubs have done very well to give us more privacy in the back you can see I let those tree limbs grow down intentionally on those trees to give us privacy on the deck and in the backyard so um, so if you look at some of the trees, if they look a little unkept, that's because I'm intentionally just letting them grow in to block the view of the deck and the patio area here. So 
And finally, we'll go over to my latest grass project here from the earlier video. Uh, you can see that's come along pretty nice here. Had to do a lot of watering. Basically, I, I put this in in probably one of the driest periods. This uh, late August, early September was very dry and warm. You can see the grass over here is doing horribly, right? Because I haven't been uh, really you know, maintaining that the same way. If you look right here at the new grass, it's come in pretty nice. So what I had to do here is I ran, I had to weed it. I worked for several weeks. You can still see I got some knotweed in there that I'll probably take out. I'll have to go through and just remove the last amounts of that. There's not much left now. But, you know, there's still some of it mixed in. And that knotweed was growing in all these cracks on the street. So I figured out that I had to remove all of that. Um... So I had to run the cultivator over this, um, cleaning out and all the compacted soil. And then, um, yeah, sure. I'm getting a lot of uh, pedestrians coming by here right now, but busy area. Anyway, um, ran the cultivator over this to loosen up the soil. Uh, Cause one thing, I guess you guys, that are going to be planting grass you got to consider that oxygen the soil's got to get oxygen right so this was all compacted out here and that's why the knotweed the knotweed can grow in low oxygen soils like this nasty environment in between the cracks and everything right so basically i had to get this back to a normal kind of a turf environment introduce some oxygen into the soil with the cultivator i tried to aerate it a little bit um, and then um, put the seed in with some topsoil over the top. Um, anyway, um, interesting. Um, so basically watering this twice a day for short durations my water bill is probably going to be horrendous just from this small little bit of grass here that I've got. But um, I, I did bring in a lot of uh, topsoil and, and put that over the top. So I kind of had a mixture of like, when I started seeding, it was probably, you know, two thirds old turf that had been weeded out. And then one third of this is all new grass. <clears throat> and then with a lot of watering, you know, so I basically saved the grass that was there and introduced all the new seed you know kind of a very public out here as you can probably tell so it's you know high profile so you kind of when you do something like this you know everybody's like gonna be looking at okay how does grass come out you know so it's anyway it's uh that's an interesting psychological aspect to all this but um so that's it that's the update don't mean to pontificate too much but there's uh it's kind of the fall update on the house just so you guys know what's going on.